I'm Jason with Tenkara USA, and today I'm going to show you how to tie a very simple traditional lupai sakasa kebari, or traditional Tenkara fly. Then at the end, we're going to take a look at some slow motion video of what it looks like underwater. The hook I'll be using for this fly is a Gamakatsu Ayu hook. It's a size 7.5, which is about equivalent to number 12 in the Western hook size system. You don't have to use this hook, and you certainly don't have to use an eyeless hook like this. You could use any hook you want, but that's just the hook I like for this fly because it's got a blue finish to it that I think works really well with the body color. First, start your thread at the front of the fly. And on eyeless hooks like this, there's something called a spade, which is kind of a little flat piece right at the end here. I just kind of leave that exposed and make a few base wraps of thread so that when I attach the loop, it's going to grip the hook nicely. Now it's time to add the loop eye, and for this I'm using silk bead cord size number two. That's about the right diameter for flies like this. It comes in thicker and thinner diameters, but I really like the number two size. And I'm just going to pinch a little loop of that, and start it right at the front of the hook, and tightly wrap back. You don't have to wrap a lot of it on the hook shank, it's pretty strong, so I only go about midway or so. And believe it or not, that's actually a very strong loop, strong enough to hold a fish. Now if you want, you can put a little glue here or head cement, but I normally don't do that. Now it's time to tie in the hackle, and for this I'm using Brahma Hen Hackle, and this is just a light badger color. And first thing I do is strip off some of that fluff on the stem, and kind of pinch it back a little bit give myself a nice little tie-in point that I'm going to tie right where I stop the thread after I tied in the loop. Now I'll take my hackle pliers, put the hackle in there, and make a few wraps going back toward the bend of the hook. Now the hackle is going to have a tendency to want to fight you a little bit, and it's going to want to kind of go all over the place. So what you can do is kind of just sweep it forward as you wrap, and that'll help all the fibers point forward. And just tie off the stem. And cut off any stray barbs. Now I'll make the dubbing body, and I'm just using olive synthetic dubbing for this. You could use fur or whatever kind of dubbing you prefer, but I like this because it's got a little bit of a, a sparkle in it, which acts as a nice attractor pattern. Now one thing about dubbing is it's always better to put less than you think you need on and add more later. If you put too much on, it's kind of hard to get it off, so I like to estimate how much I think I need and then put on a little bit less than that. So I'm just going to start forming a nice tapered body here that's a little bit thick at the thorax of the fly, and then taper down to the back. Once you've got a taper you like, you can take your whip finisher and just make a few wraps right at the back of the fly. Normally I like to tie my flies off right behind the hackle, but on a dubbed body fly like this it doesn't look really good to have a bunch of thread right here. I prefer the way it looks when it's tied off at the back. And then just go ahead and cut off the thread. These flies have been very effective for me, so why don't we take a look and see what they look like underwater.